So the next thing we want to do is just get in and learn about the gameplay, the rules, the scoring. How does RoboCode work? And then we can get in and actually start making changes to the bot to abide by those rules and uh, to create a bot that does really well. And so I'm going to go search, first of all, for uh, just RoboCode. We're going to get back to that main site and I'll pull it up. And then you'll notice here there's a getting started. And so I'm going to click on the getting started. And then in here it has some information, some of the things we've talked about, um, how to set up a battle, um, in installation, and that type of thing. I'm going to go to the game physics. So we're going to click on game physics. And so first of all, in the battlefield where the robots are battling, um, there's obviously a height and a width to that battlefield, and we can go in and modify that to make the, the battlefield bigger or smaller. But one of the important things that I want to talk about is the directional, uh, how, how it handles directions in uh, this battlefield. So zero degrees is north, up. 90 degrees is east, to the right, right? 180 degrees is south, down, and 270 degrees is left or west, right? And so we think about that. That doesn't change. At any given time, we can look at our heading as a robot and we can see which direction are we going in this battlefield based on this set coordinate system. This is going to help us uh, to know with turning and bearings and all those types of things. Just keep this in mind um, so that zero degrees is up, 180 degrees is down, 90 degrees is right, 270 degrees is, is left. And we'll use this as we uh, get in further. And so uh, time in RoboCode is measured in ticks. And each robot gets one turn per tick. It gets to do one thing per tick. Now a tick is kind of like a time unit, only it's not tied to time. It's time tied to your processor speed. And so if you're on a slower computer, the, the robots will move and do everything else slower. Um, if you're on a faster computer, they'll do it faster. But basically, everybody on the board gets a turn to either you know move forward a pixel or you know make a fraction of a turn, and then it just rotates. So everybody's kind of uh, moving at the same time, but it's on a rotational basis. Everybody gets a little fraction of a millisecond to do something. And uh, so you can see here, uh, one RoboCode distance unit is one pixel, and um, so there, there's a lot more detail here than probably what we need. Uh, accel robots accelerate at the rate of one pixel per turn every turn. A turn is a tick, and so anyway, you can't do two things at once. You can go forward or turn. You can't do both at once, um, at least, uh, meaning the computer can't do both at once. Um, it has to execute those separately. And so um, anyway, again, more detail probably than we need here um, in terms of the physics, but you can go through and read that. Bullets though, bullet damage, it does four times whatever your firepower is. We can fire from a, a you know, down to a point oh, or a, excuse me, a 0 0.1 power. Um, and if firepower is greater than one, it does additional damage of two times the power minus one. Um, so the max that we can fire at is a three. So you picture you fire a bullet at a power of three, then that would do 12 damage, but it also does additional damage of two times the power minus one. So three minus one is two, two times two is four. So we'd get 12 plus four if our bullet hits somebody um, they're encouraging us to use higher firepower. Um, again, max firepower of three. Minimum it says one, but really you can go down to a point one if you wanted to go that low. The velocity though is 20 minus three times the firepower. So if I fire with the firepower of three, then I would be three times three is nine. It would move at a velocity of 11. If I fire with the power of one, then three times one is one, it would fire at then at 20 minus three, which is 17. So if a smaller bullet 
with less firepower fires faster. And so here's where you can start strategizing in your head. Maybe if the, I scan the robot and they're far away, I want to fire with a smaller power because it's going to get there faster. And maybe if they're close, I want to ramp up the firepower, right? Um, there's this gun heat generated on firing. You don't really do too much with this other than it just means you can't just fire, 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 fire. There's a cool down period that happens before you can fire the next bullet. And then energy returned on hit. When you hit another robot, you get energy back. So if you fired with the power of one, you get three back. If you fired with the power of three, then you get nine back. If you fire with the power of two, you get six back. Aren't you impressed with my math? But the point is that the, the higher uh, you power you fire with, the more energy you get returned for your robot. If you run into another robot, each robot takes 0.6 damage, and so you take the same amount of damage if you run into a robot. Uh, we won't use advanced robots in, in the examples I'll go through, but if you're playing with an advanced robot, you if you hit a wall, you actually take damage. In the as it was, we're starting out with this and learning it. I like to use the non-advanced robot uh, so that you can hit the wall you want to, and you don't take any damage. All right. Um, Let's just jump now down to the anatomy of a robot. And that'll be really quick here. The robot is in three pieces. It has a body, it has a gun turret, this whole unit, and then it has a radar on top. All three of these things can move independently. And so you can uh, choose to keep them all the same. If you turn the gun right 360 degrees and you haven't told uh, Roboco to do anything otherwise it'll move that whole unit the gun the radar all moves that direction if I do a turn right then it moves all of those independent or, or the it turns them all the same unless I've asked it to turn them independently okay just one other thing we want to talk about and then we'll get in and actually start modifying our robot scoring in the game so the way that we score is all these different categories giving points. And the winner of the Robocode battle is the individual who has the most points in the end. And so it's not the person necessarily that's gotten the most kills. It's not the person necessarily that um, has lasted the longest. It has to do with these points. And so here we have a survival score. For every robot that's still alive, uh, every robot that's still alive scores 50 points every time another robot dies. So we get points when somebody else gets taken out of the game. In other words, the longer we last, the more points we get in that category. If we are the last survivor, then we get an additional 10 points for every robot that died before it. All right, so you can see that that's a huge advantage if you can last the longest and if you're the last one, uh, you get even more points. Bullet damage, you score one point for each point of damage you do to your enemies. And then on top of that, if you are the one that actually takes out the enemy, you get an additional 20% of all the damage that you did to that enemy. And so if you're the one to get that last shot in, or that, well, last shot in in this case, then you get an additional 20% of how much damage you did to that enemy. And so you can start thinking about that as well. Uh, ram damage. You, while you take the same amount of damage each robot, 0.6 every time you hit into another robot, you score two points for each point of damage that you cause by ramming enemies. So you get more points the more you ram. It's just that you're losing the same amount as the, the person that you're hitting. And then if you take out a robot by ramming, you actually get 30% of all the damage you did to that enemy, not just by ramming, but any of the damage. And so sometimes you'll see robots finish off another robot by running into them if the robot's out of energy or something like that because then you get this additional 10% over this if you're taking out that last robot. First, seconds, and thirds do not contribute to the score, but they help you know how long the robot survived. And so all of these things put together give you a total score, and how you win is by having the highest total score. So we're gonna try and maximize each of these things as we're building our robots. All right, well, let's enough talk about how to do it. Let's actually get in and do it. We'll get in, in our next video and start modifying our robot to do some things. Spencer, out.